Well, in, in making the demo, I mean, that's that the, the demo is based on what you're going to, uh, what you need it for. I mean, I've done demos of your guitar and vocal that sell just fine. Um, when I was working for George Tobin Music during the Tiffany days in 80, 87 to 92, um, he didn't want to hear any complete demo. He wanted to hear a guitar, vocal, a verse, and a chorus, and that's it. So I found myself for years not ever finishing a song until the producer said, like it. So I wrote, I have, I still to this day probably have 40, 50 songs that are verse and chorus. No, nothing else. I never went in and finished them. Um, because in that particular instance where I was in the writing process with this producer as a, as a project, he didn't want to hear it. He wasn't, he wasn't interested in it. So for me, I just... I wouldn't, I wouldn't bust my butt on trying to come up with a killer bridge until I needed a killer bridge. And uh, that's one way that, that we did it. You know, guitar vocals, all I'd ever pitched for this guy. And I pitched for five, six different acts that he had. Um, you get into some place like Nashville and the quality of the demos is so good, even the guitar vocals. I mean, but people think guitar vocal, they think, they think cheap, and that's not necessarily the case. I can get in on a studio with a guitar and vocal and spend the same amount of money I would have spent tracking, you know, to get the quality that I need. So it's not about so much the money, it's about what the need is for that particular uh, pitch. In L.A., my stuff, I, I try to do as, as close to master demos as I can do because... I developed myself into a small production house and small label, and so now when I'm pitching to film and TV and advertisers, I'm pitching with the the whole package, you know, from the, the publisher point of view, the songwriter point of view, maybe, uh, and the production and the label. So when I get something in a, a, a Gossip Girls or a CSI or a, you know one of those things, City of the Hills, Ugly Betty, any of those things. Um, I have to pitch for, I have to make the demos suited for what I think these guys are going to want. And uh, you can, you, you, if you ever watch any of the TV shows, which a lot of people probably don't, but um, a Grey's Anatomy pitch is going to be quite a different kind of pitch than a, a CSI pitch. You know, CSI, the last thing I had on there was a hip hop rap thing, you know. Typically, not what you're going to find on the Grey's Anatomy. It's going to be more of a singer songwriter, you know, a little bit girlish, you know, kind of deal. And so, all the pitches are important to know what you're pitching for. So, um, one of my pet peeves is when I'll do, I'll speak on these panels and stuff, and these kids will come out, and and I know they're all just trying to fast track their way in. They're trying to figure out how to not go through the 30 years that I went through. And I get that, and I'm there to help them with that as much as I can. But uh, for me, you've got to know your product. You've got to know what you're pitching for. And um, you can never go to a music supervisor um, that you that, that you know that's doing a, a, a criminal minds or whatever. You can never go to them and go, "What are you looking for?" Because they just they've just shut you out. You're done. You got to go to them, going knowing what they need already, and then because you're going to be and you're going to be pretty close when you do that. And they may they may switch. You say, you know, you know, this is pretty pretty much what we normally do. But I'm kind of looking for a because now you've got their respect by knowing what they do. You're not just going in blindly going, I got everything, what are you looking for? Because they, they, don't, they don't give a shit, you know, they, they, they need somebody that's just coming in and they don't have much time. So do your research, research. I mean, really. Do your research, yeah, you've got all the ability to do it these days. When I started, it was impossible. I mean, yeah, you had to just network, you know, try to find some guy that knew some guy that knew some guy to find out what. Uh, but these days, it's all there. It's all laid out for you. It's so clean, it's so easy, it takes so much less time. Do the research, know what you're pitching for. Don't embarrass yourself, don't waste their time. These guys are doing TV shows. I'll get a call for um, something like uh, The City. The I had the closing uh, this season, I had the clo song in the closing season. 
And you'd think they know this stuff in advance. Well, I, I locked the song in two days before the show was over. Two days. So they hadn't put the music in this at all until two days before they did the final show. So um, by being aware of what they're doing, what they're pitching, I just kind of found out today that Jersey Shore has only two more episodes. And I was supposed to have some songs in those, those shows. And right now it hasn't come out yet. So my first call tomorrow will be, what do we need to do for you? You know, you've got the stuff. Is there anything working? Am I missing something here? You know, tell me what, what's missing. But they've got all the material that I've sent them. So I know what they're looking for. And they know what I do. So now it's just a matter of sometimes that it's just being able to stay in their face a little bit and going, don't forget it. Here, here I am, you know, make sure. Right. But that requires having a relationship. And the relationship is built by making sure you don't give them crap they can't use. Because you'll do that once, maybe twice, and then they'll never talk to you again. You're done.